Hello everyone, Don the Crown here, and if you haven't seen already, there is going to be an insanely large PTR coming up for Diablo 4 for 2.0 for the Vessel of Hatred launch. And it is going to have so much stuff in it that it literally took two hours for them to talk about everything in the campfire chat. Now, that's a lot of time for you to kind of like digest all of the stuff and to kind of like inhale all of the different changes. So I'm going to try to break this down into what I think are the top seven things that you need to know for this particular uh, upcoming PTR, because it's going to be basically a brand new game, starting off right away with new difficulties. So when you first start off and you make a character, you're going to have access to normal, hard and expert difficulties. And then at level 50, which is 10 levels below the new level cap, you're going to unlock Penitent. And uh, these are pretty much designed to make it so that there's a little bit more of a journey and a little bit more of options for leveling up. Uh, they talk about it quite a bit here, but like normal is like a slow pace, probably for like first time ARPG players, whereas hard and expert offer an increased challenge for those looking to test their metal at play at a faster pace. My guess here is that a lot of people are just going to start the game, click expert, and then get absolutely rolled uh, when they don't have their legendary aspects pretty early. And so most people are probably going to level up on hard until they get a few key legendary aspects and then bump up the difficulty to expert. Penitent only comes in a little bit later once you uh, finish up getting to level 50. And it says it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, pretty much what they said is this is the equivalent of leveling on world tier 2 as it is right now plus 45 levels of monster level on top of that so it would be like going into helltide and popping all of the tormented uh all of the uh profane mind cages that you could and then some more <laughs> so it is pretty darn ridiculous pretty difficult but it's going to give you a lot of extra rewards in terms of xp and loot so if you can handle that for sure uh expert you do need to do the prologue as well to do this but i'm pretty sure that if you've been playing the game already that that's not going to be a problem Penitent, like I said, unlocks level 50. But then after that, there are now Torment levels. So if you played Diablo 3, these might be familiar to you. Right now we only have four Torment levels, one through four. We're not going up to 16 yet. But this is basically kind of the end game now. And uh, they said that Torment 1 is about the place where World Tier 3 is right now. And in order to unlock these, you're going to need to do the pit. And they've basically, long story short, switch what nightmare dungeons do and what the pit does together. So right now the nightmare dungeons are going to have mobs in them that are going to drop master working materials. So you can get them all over the place doing events and stuff and killing monsters inside the nightmare dungeons is going to give you master working materials, which makes it good for you to kill monsters in them. Whereas the pit you're looking to rush to the boss at the end as fast as you possibly can. And that's going to give you glyph XP. It's also going to allow you to unlock the higher level difficulties here. And so reaching level 60 unlocks the pit and tiers 1 to 20 of it. And you have to beat pit tier 20 in order to unlock torment 1. Beating pit tier 35 does 2, 50 for tier 3, and then 65 for tier 4. They said that right now there's going to be a cap of pit level 100. So you can see that pit 65 is pretty high up there comparatively to where it is. And they even said that pit 100 is going to be harder and pit 200 is now so i have a feeling that torment 4 is potentially going to be the land of like the op builds at first there's also a lot of negatives that come along with leveling up through the torment tiers as you can see your armor and all res is going to get absolutely slaughtered as you move up these tiers and you're going to need to find more ways to get armor and resist into your build and Tyrael's might is looking really good now to help you out with that but that's pretty much that for the difficulties. And now let's talk about the stat squish. Now you might have saw where I talked about the fact that the new cap here is level 60. And so the purpose of standard difficulty tiers, which is normal, hard, expert, and penitent, is to help you temper your character while you strive to hit level 60, at which point the pit opens up, and then you can start working your way towards the torment tiers. And so since now the cap is at level 60 they've kind of done like a stat squish down because they kind of realized that sacred gear and even ancestral kind of like wasn't where they want it to be and if you're wondering okay so what's going to happen to my character that's in uh eternal league well all items with item power over 540 are going to be adjusted to 540 
all affixes will be adjusted on these items to roll at the highest value. But now legendary items drop when you're level 60 will always be power 750. So you're pretty much going to get rolled down to like level 50 ish power. And you're going to need to find new gear in order to kind of progress into the end game. Now item power 750 items can only be masterworked four times because they are not ancestral. Uh, whereas ancestral items, I believe, are 800 item power. And they come with some interesting perks for them. So first off, every single ancestral item that you find is going to be 800 item power. It's going to have higher affix ranges than are available in anything else. And it will always come with a greater affix. Always. Every single time. So you see a greater affix at the ground. That is the indicator that, yes, this is an ancestral item. And it has, you know, at least one GA on it. And this also means that when you're farming endgame bosses for like mythic uniques, mythic uniques are always ancestral and will always have a greater affix. And these do not start dropping either the ancestrals or the mythics until torment one. And so uh, it's kind of really changing up the game here. The ancestrals are going to be a lot more powerful than higher end 750 because ancestrals can be tempered two times. They can get way more master working from four all the way up to 12. They have GAs. It's just like a real big power spike to get your first uh, ancestral weapon. I'm not really sure if I like this all that much because there really is going to be a huge power spike going from being able to like not really temper at all to being able to do two tempers and a whole bunch of more master working. I have a feeling that I'm going to be handing out a lot of weapons at the start of the season just to people who are looking to kind of get into the upper torment tiers. Now, besides itemization, so itemization has changed. So ancestral gear starts dropping at torment one. They're always power level 80, 800. Uh, greater affix only appears on them and they always have one GA. Uh, besides all the itemization stuff, if that's not been enough, there's been a lot of paragon changes as well. And paragon changes are kind of in two things. One, you are limited now to five paragon boards. That includes the starter boards. So you have to pick four boards that you're going to basically like max out and cap out. And I believe we're going to get about 300 Paragon points, which is about 45 more than we have right now. It might be even more because it wasn't very clear about Renown and if it counted into the 300 there, but we're only going to have basically five boards to spend them in. Now, they also changed how glyphs work almost all together in a really cool way. So first off, you're no longer be running Nightmare Dungeons do. Uh, get the glyphs leveled up, and it's no longer an experience thing. Instead, it's very similar to how Diablo 3's legendary gem system uh, still works, I guess, and it, you're going to do it in the pit. So it's basically just like Greater Rifts now, where you're just going to run pit tiers that are you know high up enough, and you'll get guaranteed successes on your glyphs. There's no XP for you to slowly build up, and if you are significantly, I believe, 20 levels above the glyph, you're going to get even more levels leveling up the glyph. But there is a chance to fail if you are not doing a pit that is high enough. And glyphs now level up all the way to 100. <laughs> so very, very high level glyphs now. Very, very insane. But they kind of have gotten even more nuts. So first off, uh, glyphs... I don't know if it's actually on this thing. So glyphs go up to 100. And when they go from 45 to 46 they're going to get a legendary power that is a multiplier just a damage multiplier the example they showed on the stream was just i think it was 20 percent more critical strike damage and that's like a multiplier not additive 20 percent it was just 20 percent more critical strike damage and i believe that leveled up to like 41 or something like that it was like 0.4 uh per rank from 46 all the way to 100 so you can kind of do the math there and that's a lot of damage and we're able to put you know five glyphs in and so <laughs> if each of these are giving us like 40 percent multiplicative damage that's going to be a big power boost there's going to be a good reason for you to go out and actually run the pit and level up these glyphs and uh yeah it's gonna be pretty good now if you're like oh man this sounds terrible for alts i'm not really looking forward to grinding up all these paragon points i gotta do and then the glyphs well, the glyphs, if you can do higher level nightmare dungeons, uh, because you have good gear, you'll be able to, you know, kind of leapfrog them forward. Like as you can see in this part here, 
Uh, I rolled past it. Apologies. So, uh, three deathless pit tier 30 runs would take a glyph all the way up to rank 19, which rapidly unlocks the additional radius size increase. So at level 15 and at level 46, the radius increases. So 15, just like it is right now, it goes up to the normal size. And then at 46, it gets legendary and gets even bigger, which is just absolutely huge. And you can level these up relatively quickly. Like, uh, you know, if you're doing really, really high pits, these things are going to like go up to legendary very, very, very fast. And your Paragon points are now spread across your entire account for the region. So just like Renown, where you don't need to go out and like find all the little statues and do all the quests again, once you've got the Paragon for the season, you don't need to level up Paragon anymore. You'll be able to just make a new character. It'll have all of the Paragon points that you've earned so far in that season. And you can even continue to progress for all of your characters. So it's like a meta overall progression, which I think is just amazing. It's gonna be a little bit intimidating, maybe logging into a character, getting them up to level 60, unlocking Paragon, and then suddenly having like 200 plus Paragon points to spend. But you know, that's the price you pay. Now, uh, I think the Paragon is gonna be really, really neat. It's gonna be very interesting to pick where to go on some of these boards especially because the boards themselves have changed around a little bit, mostly around the areas around the glyph. They kind of have a little bit more space they can expand to. And so they've added some more nodes. It looks like almost all of the new glyph areas might have one additional stat point, so like the seven dexterity or willpower or whatever in range of the glyph. There will be one more of those. And so there'll be a little bit more interesting options for you to pick. You have to pick the four boards that are you know, going to fit your build the best, the four or the five glyphs that are going to fit your build the best with both their normal stuff and their legendary. And there's going to be a lot of kind of like min maxing and figuring out best pathing and best rare nodes and stuff. And so this is going to be pretty exciting. Now, if all of that wasn't enough for you, we also have a new skill and a new key passive for every single class. Now, I am not going to go through all of them right now. If you want me to go through all of them in a different video, please let me know. But I'm going to quickly just give you a quick highlight of them. Number one, for Barbarian, they have Mighty Throw, where they're going to throw their weapon down, and it just pulses and does a whole bunch of damage. There's some cool stuff in here, like making it so you can get Life as Barrier, or to do a ton of damage and stun enemies. And I think this can be pretty cool. Druids, on the other hand, get this thing called Stone Burst, which kind of acts like a, I think it's Flame Burst from Path of Exile, where you kind of charge it up and it does damage in the area as you're charging it up like a little earthquake, and you release it and it explodes. And there's stuff in here. There's like a new unique for this. There's a whole, two aspects. This is a core skill, and this thing is going to absolutely just be blowing up screens as you increase the area of this, and it's just going to be really, really cool. Necromancer gets a new alt. That kind of is like unholy righteous fire. It seems like that with some of the uh, uniques and stuff, you'll be able to keep this up all of the time. It applies vulnerable. It has a whole bunch of other benefits and bonuses. Oh, and by the way, ultimates now can get skill ranks to them. And so if you have like a heart of Crest, it can like get plus four and you can put five points in the total yourself and you can even get plus ultimate ranks on gear. And so you can really invest in your ultimates now. So when you see that, you know, Necromancer got an ultimate. Don't think, oh man, I will never use this. They're trying to make ultimates really good. We're going to have to see how good it works out. For rogues, you basically got the spin to win move. Uh, this is the Dance of Knives, and it basically has you spinning around, throwing knives at enemies. And I believe this is probably going to be insanely overpowered. Uh, there's some really cool Paragon stuff and aspects that will buff this up. This is an agility skill. And so you can do like some, uh, you know, subterfuge skill into agility skill and make it do like almost 100% more damage. And so I think that that's going to be very fun to play with. Sorcerer kind of got a familiar skill from Diablo 3. Familiar, but unlike in Diablo 3, this is not going to be a passive companion that doesn't do anything. This has elemental effects to it. And so it bases its element based off the last spell that you cast and it will either apply chill burning in an area of effect or stun enemies and there is a new unique here that makes it so you summon all three at the same time and you can even make it so that this kind of rotates through a rotation of them so you can apply all of the effects 
And if you are just like going pure fire, for example, it can make it so that wall of familiar is active. You get increased damage for skills. I'll do at least a whole Sork video talking about my thoughts on this, but it seems pretty cool. And yeah, so every class is getting also new passives as well. There's a whole bunch of passives, key passives, and uh, I could go through all this like for hour long you know, video, and I don't really want to do that. I can probably do like a breakdown of all the skills in a future thing. So besides all that, we might think they were done. You're wrong. Rune words are also coming to Diablo 4. That's right. Rune words. Now, when I first heard about rune words and people kept saying rune words, rune words, rune words, blah, 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 I'm like, I do not want what Diablo 2 rune words were because it kind of is just like another unique in a slot that's just going to be like, this is the best in slot unique. I have to wear this. And they didn't do that. What they're doing instead is that runes are going to replace gems and you can put a pair of runes into your armor that has two slots or a weapon that has two slots. Helmets have two slots, by the way. Now uh, you put the, the rune word in there and it will just like replace your gems basically. And so each rune word is either a triggering rune, the top one, and it has stuff like travel five meters and then, or a like, you know, triggering rune here, uh, or a spender rune, I guess you could say. So like jaw here replaces your next evade with sorcerer's teleport, blinking further, dealing damage and becoming unstoppable. So uh, yeah, this seems pretty good. And so each upper rune word is going to have a thing that like causes it to activate and it gives amount of offering. So you can see here that the back rune makes it so that once you travel five meters, you gain 50 offering. And then the teleport one here, for example, requires 500 offering. So you're going to need to travel 50 meters in order to proc the back jaw uh, combination here, right back at you. <laughs> and so uh, I'm not really sure how far teleport itself goes, but I kind of understood from the live stream that like bleeping and other stuff like that would count towards this. And so if uh, teleport can go like almost 50 meters, this would mean that you could, with this combination, potentially just have a teleport on evade every two seconds, which especially for classes that don't have a lot of maneuverability options, looking at you necromancers, this could be a very appealing combination. And these runes are not one-time use. You can take them out of your gear. You can craft to like three to one, to try to gamble for new ones. You can trade them with friends and you can even turn them into mythic items using resplendent sparks. So there's a lot of stuff going on here and they did a whole list of all of the runes. And uh, I want to do an entire separate video talking about these, which ones I think are good, which one I think are bad, but you can have a total of two rune word combos. So uh, I think these are going to be pretty neat. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how the trading for this goes. Now, all of this comes down to say that there's going to be a PTR from September the 4th through September the 11th. And in this, you're going to be able to test out, I think, pretty much everything except for rune words right away. And the first couple of days, so the 4th and the 5th, is going to be 100% focused on testing out the new leveling journey and a new experience. And uh, you're going to be able to level up. And then on the 6th, they're going to be adding a vendor into town. It's a little like dancing, you know, demon dude. And he'll be able to boost you up to higher levels, get you better gear, sell you a whole bunch of materials. It's going to potentially be really, really good and good way to play. And this is for Battle.net PC only, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned to the channel if you want more information about what's coming up with uh, the expansion here. I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and there's going to be a lot of opportunities for some absolute craziness, especially with like runes in here, giving you some really fun options like uh, proccing like Barbarian's Earthquake on other builds, teleporting on all sorts of different classes. And it's just going to be pretty great. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, guys, and we'll see you again soon.